Good evening. It's an absolutely glorious evening in South Wales. We are towards the tops of the South Wales valleys. We are just on the side of Penn, Garn, Bugal. It's been a bit of a random evening so far. It is, I think it's just gone seven o'clock. And uh, I went to park up in the little car park at the bottom of the hill. And there was just loads of cars in there. And just sort of families of people just milling about something like shirts and ties. I don't know what was going on. Some, I don't know if it was some kind of wake or whatever, but I don't know. <laughs> Everyone was staring at me as if I was uh, interrupting something. So I decided to drive on slightly further, park further away and uh, walk from there. So when I parked up there, I was just basically attacked by some horses. <laughs> uh, very friendly, very curious, trying to um, eat my jacket then trying to chew various parts of my car, trying to get in my boot. <laughs> so, <laughs> I don't know, one of them just wouldn't leave me alone. It started following me as well. So thankfully, uh, that's literally all behind me now. Although they could just be in my car, but I'll just take the chance because it is a, a glorious evening so far. So we're going to walk north and in the very distance you should be to see the central Brecon beacons there, Corn Dee, Penavan, Cribbin, really great views of those. And then a huge, now defunct open cast mine in front of us and the, the hills that that's made. And to our left is uh, Menefkil Vakarenso, which I walked the other day for the miners list, absolutely cracking hill. I was going to attempt to attempt a wild, wild camp that as well, but I uh, haven't so far. And strangely, I've been here already today. Um, the baby's asleep in the car already when we're driving past, so I pulled over, let the baby sleep with uh, my missus in the car. And I went for a quick stroll to check out whether there was any decent pictures up here. Just loads and loads and loads of horses and uh, quite a few sheep as well, but a really nice location. And the only issue I'm seeing now <laughs> there seems to be cows also joining in. I'm not a fan of cows around where I want to be wild camping. And looking ahead to the hill, which I had checked out earlier, there's a lot of figures on that hill. And uh, if all the cows have moved a huge distance from where I saw them earlier to all go and congregate on the hill I want to camp on, that's going to be really, really frustrating. And I would say I hope it's just horses, but <laughs> they've been not exactly um, leaving me alone tonight either. We have got a tent from, I think, the 1970s, an old Robert Saunders Falpine. So I'm hoping that's going to be a good solid tent for tonight because the weather is glorious right now. But by nine o'clock, they give really heavy rain setting in right the way through till tomorrow morning, maybe hopefully ending about six o'clock. So. I can get up and pack away in just a bit of light rain. So it should be a nice night to be cozy in a tent with heavy rain. And I should be able to enjoy most of the evening light before the rain sets in. Oh, there's definitely a huge herd of something on the hill. <laughs> so I had planned to camp over there because it drops away and you've just got those beautiful views north of the Brecon Beacons, right the way from west to east. Black Mountain one side, the Black Mountains the other, the Sugarloaf. But <laughs> if that's a load of cows, I can't really see myself wanting to pitch in the middle of a herd of cows. And there's another group sort of following me a bit as well. So yeah, all in all, <laughs> the best laid plans are, uh, are not working so far. I put some photos of my walk early, but I've never seen so many horses on a hill before. Just absolutely hundreds of them. And it looks like the sky and that promised rain is moving across from West Wales over to us. And we're on this kind of grassy highway heading towards a herd of something.
And now Renault Megane has joined us. I've never seen <laughs> anything like this before. Um, there's clearly no road access to here. Just out of nowhere, this Renault Megane turned up with a load of uh, young people in it driving straight across this grassy common. So, <laughs> yeah, this is just out to be the worst, the worst wild camp trip I've ever been on, I think, because it's just a complete disaster. I mean, horses and cows and sheep and stuff, yeah, but a random car for the people. <laughs> That is too much. So I've walked along the edge, um, kind of hidden from the from the car, which I can still hear on top of the hill doing donuts and <laughs> driving back and forth. So I am normally sat on camera or walking on camera in the South Wales Valley to tell you what an amazing place they are to explore, what an amazing place they are to wild camp, and how you don't need to go to the Brecon Beacons. Um, but yeah, you don't get interrupted in the Brecon Beacons by Renner McGann. So there's definitely a few points to the, uh, the Brecon Beacons today. So I don't know what to do. I've walked about a mile to be here. I'm kind of hidden away now, really quite isolated from, from anybody. Um, but there's nowhere to pitch down here, really not, not enough space and too steep in most of the areas. So do I wait for the car to go to try, try and go back to my car? It's about a mile and a bit away and then try and make it somewhere else before the rain sets in, but the rain is looking like it's not too far away now. So I don't know. I don't really want to abandon it because I was quite looking forward to getting out and using this old tent and uh, having a night in the rain. But it just all depends on <laughs> how long this car hangs around because it's just driving around in the exact spot it's going to wild camp and it's just not a place where a car should ever be. <laughs> But I'll show you the views though, because the views from where I'm sat are really great. So I've just skirted around the hill on this nice little sheep trail. You can see the rain in the distance and the big clouds, the remnants of a sunset. And then the Brecon Beacon still showing, showing quite clearly. And then the moors that kind of top the head of the valley. So. I think we'll just keep moving around this side and just see what happens. Well, the car appears to have gone and I don't think came up as far as here, but there are a lot of horses, <laughs> absolutely tons of them, but it does seem quite peaceful now, so I'm going to find somewhere to pitch. Looking east all the way to the Black Mountains and the very distinctive point of the Sugarloaf, and you can see the heads of the valleys just dropping away to the kind of more open moorland and swinging back round all the valleys and ridgeways south and the sea in the very distance which you probably can't make out from here now not with a little bit of haze over here but I can see like Minnow Twin Glast and Barlam um, the local hills to me where I've obviously wild camped as well it is a fantastic location <laughs> the occasional car notwithstanding and it's definitely looking nice and grey and rainy over there and the uh, western black mountain in the Bracken Beacons is looking a little bit shrouded in cloud now and the central peak's not quite so well defined but beautiful evening I've got an awful lot of horses uh, watch what I'm up to <laughs> lots of foals as well and the tent a lot of pegging out to do <laughs> it's not the easiest thing to pitch so not very quick so, finally pitched up after a bit of messing around. So here is my 1970s Robert Saunders Falpine tent. Pretty cool looking thing. Should be a reasonably comfy sleep. But obviously, getting in and out for a toilet break is not going to be good when it's chucking down the rain. But yeah, 
a really smart little tent. Should be plenty rugged enough for the kind of conditions. It's not very windy now. It's just going to rain a lot. And then inside, <laughs> a very saggy inner, but enough space for all my gear inside in the dry. And a nice little place to sit in the porch and take in the views north. So you can see it there, the Condi, Penavan, Cribbin, and then all the flat mountains finally big across to Khan Pika, which drops down then. And then over there, the Black Mountains and the Sugarloaf right in the distance. So absolutely fantastic views from here. And the Western Beacons, the Black Mountain side, has now disappeared into this very dark cloud and what's clearly the bank of rain that's forecast to come in in the next half hour or so. So it has been one of my most random kind of wild camps so far. Um, the people in the car park, that was just a bit odd. Um, the overly friendly horse, <laughs> I've never had that before. Um, not like that, That's, that was really strange. And um, yeah, the Renault Megane <laughs> driving around for about half an hour on top of the hill. Um, <laughs> I've camped a few times now in the South Wales Valley, so I've never had anything like that. Um, and then about a quarter of an hour ago, a couple and their dog walked by not too far away, so they, they clearly saw me, but they didn't uh, didn't ask any questions or seem that concerned. They could probably see I was just uh, <laughs> just wanted a peaceful place to camp. Um, but yeah, maybe this is not a place I would turn to to camp on. Um, the views are absolutely amazing, but. To the left is Munaf Gilvacarental, so I wonder if that's a better bet for a peaceful camp. So maybe if I want to camp in this area again, I'll go that way, or I can go to the other side, and there's another ridgeway there, which should be reasonably peaceful. So, but then I thought this is reasonably peaceful, so obviously I don't really know. <laughs> Just having a gamble, but fantastic views now. Really, what a great location. I just wonder when it starts raining that I've got the only shelter on the hill. I wonder how many horses are going to come over and see me because, yeah, there's a huge herd of, is it a herd? A herd of horses? I don't know. Gathering, collection, a glue of horses, I don't know. It's about 10 to 9, the rain has started, so the forecast once has been pretty accurate and uh, it's already starting to get a little bit heavier. So, one of the finest things in life, the sound of rain on a tent and the view is still really nice so i can just soak it up literally and uh and i've got plenty of space to kind of maneuver myself inside to get the sleeping bag out and stuff so i won't bother doing that yet um yeah strange evening but i think finally now the rain at least should keep anyone else away well the car or a car has come back for like the last 20 minutes um, driving around all of the hill um, so it's a bit sketchy really because this isn't a particularly bright tent it's quite camouflaged so they did have the lights on thankfully but I'm hoping I don't get run over at some point in the night I'm hoping I'm done for the evening now it's been raining for a couple of hours so um, or an hour at least, I can't tell you what time it is, it's just done 10, 10 o'clock, half past 10. So I'm hoping they're done for the evening, I can't hear the car anymore. But it's weird because I could hear a car, but I just assumed it was on a road somewhere. And then <laughs> I saw the lights appear down in front of me as it drove up over the hill. And uh, then it's behind somewhere, skidding around. I mean, I'm not a million miles from a from a lane, from a country lane, but this is a common, it's completely grassy, there's no access up here for vehicles. It's just some idiots driving off-road for a bit of fun. Um, but I'm hoping, hoping they're done for the night now, because up until then it was really relaxing. Um, yeah, not a spot I'm going to return to. Use a great, it's a lovely place, but yeah. I'll come up here for a walk, but I'll never camp up here again because it's just been 
a bit of a nightmare now with two different cars driving around on the common. Uh, yeah, lesson learned. <laughs> so I'm hoping that's it now. I've still got the tent open, I'm still looking out uh, with some distant lights <laughs> and occasional car lights driving towards me. Um, yeah, gonna call it a night now, I'm gonna try and take my contacts out and get sorted because I was half tempted to pack the tent away and go, but it's raining, I'm quite comfy and cosy in here, hoping they've just gone and yeah. I will obviously catch up with you every night if anything exciting or tragic happens, but I'm hoping it's going to be just the sound of rain from now on. inside the vintage tent and amazingly it's foggy out but they don't forecast rain it's about 11 o'clock now so I should be able to pack away and get back to the car without getting rained on which is quite nice so nothing more exciting happened overnight it did absolutely chuck it down <laughs> several periods of the of the night it rained all night um, but at certain times it was really really heavy but the tent it's absolutely waterproof, which is pretty cool given how old the tent is. Um, but I knew it was kind of waterproof on the outside already. I was just concerned with the ground sheet, but that seems to be seems to be absolutely fine as well, to be honest. So all in all, pretty successful um, night in the tent. But it is a tent I'm going to sell because, yeah, I mean, it's a cool vintage tent, but I've got too many tents already. And it's always on my mind just to use this one and sell it and just keep my, my vintage um, Robert Saunders space packer instead and just get rid of this one because this is got just the awkward way of getting it out of the tent and stuff. It's not um, not a, not as clever a design as the space packer, I don't think. But yeah, it's been a good test for it. Incredibly warm in here. This cotton, this cotton, in there, I don't know, it seems to retain the heat. I was absolutely boiling last night. I'm just down to my t-shirt and boxer shorts now and it's really really warm just like that uh, but thankfully the car didn't come back or at least I didn't hear it <laughs> it was raining quite heavy so it would have made conditions quite difficult for them because it, obviously if it was just a McGann again it's not it's not designed for that kind of off-road use so in the torrential rain mud and stuff wouldn't have been the best uh, best conditions for it and it's French it probably broke down it probably broke down after the second one. I'll probably find it abandoned somewhere on the way back to the car. But anything that happened of any kind of excitement was I went outside for a wee at God knows what time in the morning. And it was chugging it down. And it was a bit sort of misty and foggy as well. So visibility was really poor. And when I turned around to get back to the tent, I just couldn't find it. <laughs> I had only gone like a couple of meters from the tent. But yeah, it's got slightly disorientated and had to, in the end, switch off my head torch and then crouch as low as I could just to try and see the sort of silhouette of the tent to try and listen out for it flapping in the wind. So eventually found it, but I was I was soaked by the time I got back. So hence why I'm only wearing my t-shirt and boxes because everyone else got soaked. So it just shows how easy it is to, um, to get disorientated when you're tired and when it's foggy and stuff. But yeah. I mean, that wasn't very exciting, but <laughs> it's the only thing that happened overnight. It's about quarter to eight now, so i better get up and uh, get packed away. That's, it's actually difficult to get the water off. No, so it survived. And only downside on the inside again, saggy interior, but also nowhere to hang a lamp. So you can't have a truly civilized tent, in my opinion, if you can't hang a lamp in it. Actually, a little bit of sunshine appeared a minute ago. So this is nowhere near as bad as it was uh, forecast to be, so not too bad at all. The tent is behind me there, and I'm just looking over the little edge here, and I can just about see the fresh, skiddy, muddy tire tracks on that car. So 
they weren't very far away at all, but um, thankfully far away enough not to uh, not to run me over. Not too bad a morning, really. Foggy, cloudy, can't even see the hilltop over there. But it's not raining, so it means I can pack away nice and easily and get back to the car without getting wet, which is nice. So yeah, this has been my first sort of camping adventure in the South Wales Islands that haven't, hasn't gone very well. <laughs> it's the first time I've been on a hill I think that's been as accessible to vehicles, so I perhaps should have clocked that from the US maps and from walking around here, but there's a lot of hills in South Wales with tracks on them and stuff because of dirt bikes and that, which normally happens during the day. Um, I'm now aware that people do like to go off-roading in random cars at night as well, so I shan't be back here, despite it being a place with really, really great views. Uh, I can't even speak. A place with really, really great views and um, lots of nice grassy pitches because of all the sheep and horses. They mow it quite nicely. So no, I shan't be back here for another camp, but I will endeavour to stick with the uh, the valleys, although. I do think my next camp will be back up in the Brecon Beacon Sandbelt there for a while, so I think I will um, get back to a slightly more peaceful pitch and try and find something a bit dramatic. Big dry footprint from the tent. That's Pen Gan Bugal, 477 metres. I'm going to walk back towards that now. I think you're starting to see it's clearing out a little bit, some views across the other valleys. Brecon Beacon's completely hidden in cloud. But you can see some sunshine breaking through in different areas. So I'm not going to complain at all about uh, the weather this morning. So that's about 25 past eight. Didn't take long to pack away. It's a civilized tent to pack away in because you've got so much space inside. Once you drop the inner, tons of space to move around and do stuff. Realize I haven't put my contacts in, so I can't actually see anything. So. When I get back to the car, I have to get my uh, bag open again, get my contacts out, put them back in before I can drive home because I'm not sure if I've got any glasses spare in the car I can wear, <laughs> but I really can't drive without, uh, without something. So all in all, it wasn't too bad a camp in the end. The weather was exactly what it said it was going to be. Uh, rained exactly the right time. And they, the forecast was for it to be sort of light rain this morning. So the fact that that rain has disappeared to nothing until about 11 o'clock is really good. Kind of like the ideal night. I had the most of uh, taking the views in, in the dry and the sun, and really extensive views of, of all the surrounding valleys and the mountains. And then a nice night time of rain on the tent, which was pretty loud, but didn't stop me from sleeping too badly. And then waking up with the rain having stopped. So ideal really, but I can see now I'm sort of getting towards the, uh, so, so I think this is a track they were driving on last night. So it was really, really close to where I was pitched. I can see this fresh tire tracks down here now. I'll just show you those. So this was the uh, sort of motorway they were using. So probably about 20 meters from where I was pitched. My next camp will definitely be planned somewhere where I know it's very peaceful and there's zero chance of any kind of road access. I don't know where the horses are gone. The horses have all disappeared. And thankfully the cow stayed away as well. So it was just, just me and the sheep this morning. So you can see the lump where I camped last night and it drops away to the distant views. A little bit of sunlight breaking through every now and again, which uh, does make it nice. And we're parked somewhere around the corner of this hill, so not far to go now. Well, I'm not far from the road now and hopefully I'm not far from my car. I can't 
quite remember where I parked it. <laughs> I was just sort of walking here away from the uh, horses last night, so I wasn't really focused on the route I was taking. So hopefully I'll find it soon, get my contacts in and get home. But anyway, hopefully it's been a, <laughs> a reasonably interesting video about camping in South Wales. Certainly learned a few lessons last night. But if you made it this far, as always, a huge thanks for watching. And hopefully, I'll catch you in the next one.